just quiz uh, so no, uh, it's okay. Okay, so the session is on recording mode, uh, so I'm recording the session. Now I think also maybe uh, just a reminder that you should also uh, take, take the opportunity to review the, the video recording. Uh. I'm not sure whether your other lecturers do that, uh, give your uh, the, the recording. So but I thought maybe it's useful for you all, right? Okay, so uh, today's topic will be on theory part on serial communication. Uh. This is topic number four. Uh. Okay, so maybe I would also take the opportunity to just share with you the have a quick look at the lesson plan, right? Okay, so where are we now? Eh? Okay, so if you look at it, I hope you all are still doing okay eh, for the circuit breaker. I think more or less you all you get the get the sort of get used to it already, eh, sort of uh. week now is week uh five, eh? right? Today's the Friday, week five. Uh. Next week will be week six, eh? So we understand that uh, MOE says that what, the circuit breaker will be lifted, right? So, but not everybody gets to go back to school immediately. Eh? So we all understand that. That means on the 2nd of June, right? Not everybody gets to go back. So on and so forth. We are supposed to have this, continue the, the what do you call that? The uh, home-based learning, right? Until further notification. Eh? Okay, but I understand yesterday we had a staff meeting uh, online and then I was, we were told that uh, you all will receive uh, email from the management uh, regarding the this uh, going back to campus, what are the details and so on. And then I think they even have uh, segregation, uh, certain segregation of the campus. That means you all only can go to certain part of the campus. Uh, the one the details will real, let you all know later. Uh, or for example, we, are, we belong to the SOE, right? Uh, if you are on the east side, uh, so called, and then, uh, like for example, they, they will issue you colored lanyards uh, where so that you all cannot like roam around the campus uh, as and when. Uh, but then, the details will come back uh, from the management. Uh, so, you all just keep an eye on your email, uh, just watch out. Okay, for the on your email mailbox. Uh. Okay, so uh, for us today, right, okay, to cut it short, okay, today we are week five, we are going to start on the theory. Actually, we are running a little bit behind for the lab four, but not to worry, I, I provided the resources. Uh. So I, I hope you all got the downloaded, just now the Dropbox link, uh, if you have not done so, uh, can you all please do that, uh, just now the link, uh, is check, see your WhatsApp chat. Uh. Okay, I've given you a so-called, I say, please download this material uh, and then unzip them, it's for lab four. Okay, there's a link inside got several of the VIs uh, for the lab four one. Right? Okay, some are really being done for you already, mostly done for you already. There's only one or two that you need to add a bit, which I will later cover. Right? Okay, so we will cover this part called theory uh, for the topic for today. And we will do a bit of the lab four. Okay, because uh uh the following week, uh, next week, week six, uh, okay, you have this thing called remote learning. Eh? Okay, but we will still, see, I will still see you in, in so-called like, like today like that online. Okay, but you all need to attempt the remote learning package on for this thing called the QSM, Q state machine. Okay, and then of course next week there's another short quiz three, uh, short one. Uh. Okay, uh, how you all find the quiz today? Any comments? Anybody? You can try to say, then you can type up. Uh, if you have any comments, some feedback. How was the quiz today? Any comments from anyone? Anybody want to say something? Uh, today's quiz how? Uh, you know, I wait for a while, uh, maybe the, you are trying to form the message. Eh? Okay, so, uh, so next week we will do this thing called the uh, QSM, uh, okay? All right, so maybe uh, just to let you know, uh, we are now to next week will be week six. Eh? Okay, so this one, if no, if nothing to query, right, we will close, I will minimize this one first for the Excel because I'm, my Excel are sometimes got problem. Eh? Okay, let's close. Okay, good. Now then, the, uh, let me bring you to the next, uh, I'll show you the, what do you call that? You know, my, um, my mail. Uh. Okay, so, Bit laggy. Uh, okay, can. So we are here. You can see my screen. Still okay, huh? Still with me, eh? Okay. Today very quiet, eh? Your class. 
no my no my no 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 uh chatty today not very chatty you know today is all very quiet not chatty today chatty today anyone no punchy already after the quiz uh, okay good thank you eh. uh kama Kuman also very quiet today. Today you all no 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 uh very quiet. Okay. Tired, yeah, yeah. Oh okay, Justin, today tired. Why hey, morning what you all do? Oh, Tin. What do you all do in the morning? Oh, for the whole week. Uh? Oh okay, la, understand it. Yeah, today is a Friday, yeah. Uh? Yeah, uh, yeah, Friday, yeah. Uh? Last, yeah, understand. Someone I think it's my last class right for today last class right for this afternoon yeah okay thank you eh? thanks for at least thanks for coming up uh, to the class okay good all right so yeah press on uh, just a while more okay after you all can take a break uh. and then monday is a public holiday yeah uh, don't forget okay now uh so today right okay now actually uh part of the stuff that i have uh Try to share with you is that if you if you find that the mail is a very good quite a lot of resources uh, actually I created a lot of these things uh, a lot of time and a lot of time spent eh, to be honest so let's say for example if you look at this tab here okay, let me uh, put my zoom uh, just a while call up my this magnifying tool eh. okay. Ah, okay uh. so uh, over here now if you still at mail if you are still at mail you can see okay uh okay i i have a host of this uh so-called uh created the video uh, for you all i hope you all can find it useful uh. for example on here right okay just a while a bit laggy uh. suddenly uh, maybe i got too many windows open eh. okay just a while let me shut this thing eh. yeah. Wait, uh, sorry eh. okay let's close this thing uh, something uh, okay, okay. okay can go back to here okay so basically under the tab of 43 uh, sin uh, module this one uh, yeah so you click on this one right okay this tab here uh, okay if you can see on my screen okay this one uh, uh, if you click on this one okay there's a series of this past video recording okay which i think you should really make use of yeah, to be honest uh, because i think some some of the things it may not be possible to cover everything in the class eh. so uh let's say so if you click on this past video right it actually also entails and uh, it covers some of the past uh what do you call that uh, things that you may have query and for example so if i'm launching yeah the website are there here are the orders some of the videos okay so you can see uh, now i'm not going to play any of the video here because no point because when i play i i don't i don't think you can hear the audio there is not the point also i just want you to know the link okay so there are certain things like array function quotient remainder okay and then all these things right what is code with okay all these things are uh, yeah and then also the topic on the serial communication one all are being captured already but so but these are were done in the class settings uh, when you know during the good times when we were in when i was in the class uh, with my students right and i can i was able to do that eh. so luckily got captured those videos uh, Okay, so I would urge you uh, to please watch this, but these three videos uh, uh, later on. Uh, but I'm going to just briefly touch on it. Okay, so if you allow me, okay, I want you to focus uh, on these three videos. Eh. Okay, what are the three? Uh, the, the one on topic four, very important topic, uh, topic four. Okay, the topic four will we'll also have uh, so-called uh, mini quiz. Uh, Okay, there'll be a bit of mini quiz next week, okay, to go through this one. And then uh, there's also a much later one, which is on week 11, eh, where you have written quiz. Eh. So you will read this thing, we'll come back again. Okay, so the video here is really useful. Eh. Okay, so we'll cover this topic for briefly today. But I expect you to watch the video, lah, okay? 
so that we have more class time. Uh, then we can do some of the more lab view stuff. Eh. Alright, so uh, topic four. So the lecture recording part one. Okay, even break down for you the minutes. Uh, so nine minutes, uh, 20 minutes, and another five minutes. Eh. So all in all, maybe about half an hour or so. Uh. So please spend time to go and review this video. Very important. Eh. So it may be, maybe I'll just click one and show you. Uh. So the video actually is on YouTube. Okay, freely accessible. You, you have no problem accessing it. Uh. No issue. Eh. Okay, i just show you. Uh. Just in case, if you want, you all know how to download YouTube video. Uh. I think, do I need to teach you? Or you all know already? Uh, okay, so a video, something like that. Uh. Uh, okay, serial communication topic. Uh, you all cannot hear the audio, right? Can you hear the audio of the YouTube? Uh. 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 Yeah, can y'all hear the audio uh, on the YouTube? Yeah, very laggy, right? Yes, true. Eh? Cannot hear one. Yes, it's normal. Uh, Chong Lui. Chong Lui. Uh, okay, this the video you cannot hear one because uh, I'm playing it just the, the YouTube. Uh, this is usually the case. This is quite normal. Uh, that means on the Zoom, uh, like you cannot capture the uh, another the external uh, video eh, of the YouTube site. So it's okay. Don't worry. But if you click on the link, by yourself, uh, you can watch it separately uh, uh, from your own machine eh, on your own laptop to watch the YouTube. So you should do that. Yeah, very laggy now. Uh, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play. Eh. Okay, that's not the intention uh, to show you the YouTube. What's the point? You all can watch it on your own. Uh. I just want to show you where to find things. Eh. Okay, where to find these videos. Uh, uh. So this is one on the serial communication. Okay, so serial comms, uh, serial communication. Okay, uh, very important topic for this module, uh, very important part or topic, uh, especially for quiz and so on. Quiz and test. Okay, so I just want to share this one with you. Okay, so what I'm what I will do, uh, okay, there's another there's three videos, uh, part one, part two, and part three. So uh, I need you to watch it maybe when you have time. Eh. But I will just run through very quickly with you, uh, if you don't mind. Okay, uh, yeah, so serial com. Okay, can you all see my slides? Uh? Can give some response or not? Don't mind it. Can have some response and have can have a small response. Uh. Today I very lonely. Eh? See the slide and see the slides. Can. Can, uh, thank you very much. Okay. All right. So uh maybe I'll just run through very quickly. All right, but a lot of things really cover in the video. Eh? But what I want to highlight some of the key things eh, regarding serial communication is that uh it's a very common type of communication uh protocol. Okay, that is being used uh when we communicate with instruments. Uh, okay. So, but I understand that nowadays you got USB, uh, all the high tech things, all and, and, and other types of communication uh, things that uh, keep coming up. Eh? Okay. So uh, now this ASCII code thing, I won't go through with you. It's just a table. It's explained in my video. So, but basically ASCII is a type of standard code uh, that is being used. Uh, and ASCII stands for American Standard Code of Information Interchange. Uh. Okay, it's a standard way to communicate. Now, how to read this ASCII table? Very simple. Now, let's say, for example, I want the letter, uppercase letter A, right? How to, how to, how to figure out? This character is coded. Uh, okay, it's coded into, uh, how to read it? Uh, into a uh, hexadecimal. You all know what's a hexadecimal? Uh? Hexadecimal. If you do not know it, hexadecimal uh, coding, it means that A, right, for example, the uppercase letter A, which you can find it here, okay, is coded to be 41. Eh? 
Now, how to read 41? Because you read the row first followed by the column. And it's quite, it's quite simple. Eh? Right now. You see, yeah. Okay, wait, let's do. Okay. So the letter A, okay, is uh be uppercase letter A, upper big big A, uh, big A is read as 41. Eh? Okay, so just take note. So every character there on the ASCII table is coded. So you have to read the row first, then followed by the column. Eh? So another example, maybe I want to read the exclamation mark. Eh? You see this not exclamation mark, this one. The one with the or maybe something easier. Eh? Maybe the let the number number nine, eh, for example, the number the number nine, the numeric number nine. Okay, so you read the row first, uh, row that means it's three, right? Uh, for the number nine, uh, so number nine, okay, number nine, uh, okay, number nine. Okay, how to read is, uh, usually for hexadecimal, you will put a dollar sign also eh, in front of the, the number. So number nine is actually 30, is it 31? Uh? What is the number nine? 39, right? Okay, it's a hexa, hexadecimal 39. Just an example, uh, just to share you. Eh. Okay, so this is uh, for ASCII code. Eh. Now, uh, moving along. Uh, okay, now a data, a data frame that you transmit, uh, as we know, uh, a computer system is only understand uh, ones and zeros. Uh. I hope you all understand. A computer system is a binary system. Uh. Okay, I, I believe everybody knows that. So it's one or zeros. Agree? Right, so in order to transmit a, a character, right, so based on just now the character, just now, for example, you see this example here, the, the character C, okay, the character C here in ASCII uh, is 67. Eh? So we are usually, what we do is that the C, right, correct, for example, this is just an example, uh, example C in ASCII, uh, okay, in ASCII code, right, is 67. Okay, so what we do is that we will uh, convert uh, the 67 uh, hexa code uh, into hexadecimal, short form H-E-X, uh, hex, or hexadecimal if you want me to spell in full. Uh. This one must be converted, uh, converted to a uh, binary. Right, you need to convert this into a binary pattern. Okay, so I think if you, by the by good old days, we know uh, uh, 67, you can use your calculator to, to convert, right? Now, the 67 example here, okay, you convert into a binary pattern. Okay, this is the binary pattern. The center piece here is the binary pattern, uh, eight, the 8 bit data. Eh. Now, I also hope that you can remember what is uh, LSB. Uh. Anybody know what's LSB? Uh? Anybody? You can type least, there also. List what? Something? Yeah, I heard somebody say something. Least significant, least significant bit. Ah, very good. Eh? Thank you very much. Okay, LSB, least significant bit, right? Very good. Okay, least significant bit. And of course, the MSB. Okay, MSB is the most significant bit, lah, right? The most significant. Okay, so uh, most significant. Lah. So I just type it out for you. So now, if, you're, if you use your calculator, you can literally convert the character into the binary pattern and then you can lay out your binary pattern uh, in that format. So for example, they start from LSB, then all the way to MSB. Uh, okay, so the 8 bit usually, but sometimes in, most of the time we put LS, MSB for the LSB, but it doesn't matter. Uh, but as long as you know which one is the LSB, which one MSB, you can lay out accordingly. Okay, so the key point is that for data to be transmitted serially, uh, serial communication, you don't just transmit the character, the number of the 8-bit data. Eh. Okay, sometimes data can, can be 7 bits also, 8-bit uh, or 7 bits. Let's say 8-bit data. Eh. Now, usually when you do communication, right, you don't just transmit the data 8-bit only alone because you need to package it. Eh. Okay, so a good example will be like, for example, a postman, right? A postman wants to post you a letter, let's say, uh, 
okay, uh, I mean the postman don't post you a letter, the postman deliver the letter to you, right? But let's say uh, maybe Nian Poly want to send you a letter or it's time when you are graduation, eh? so they send you a letter, right? Your graduation pack, let's say. So uh, Nian has to put up, first of all, put everything, put the graduation or the whatever thing that they want to send you, right, into an envelope, right? Right, envelope, then they probably have they, they they have a way to send it to you, right? They put the they have to put an envelope and they bring they send it to the post uh, then they, the postman will do the delivery, right? So same thing. Eh? Then of course on the envelope itself they must write all your names, your details, and so on, right? So same thing. Eh? So in order to trans communicate or the data need to be transferred, let's say from one computer to another computer, let's say, uh, okay. Uh, the, the data need to be packaged first. Eh? Package means to frame up the thing. Okay, frame up means some sort of like an analogy is like what just now I share you like the the, the Nian need to write down your details, right? Because otherwise the envelope uh, with no name uh, who to how the postman know where to send. Right. So you need to package up everything. Write your name, full name, your postal code, everything. And then this then after with that information, then you can send out the letter, right? So in the same thing, so the data needs to be packaged, eh? packaged up. For example, the data is if you look at my slide here, the data, the AB data is actually inside here, the LSB to MSB. And then the data needs to start to have a start bit, right? A start bit, uh, okay. Usually the start bit, there's a stop bit also. Eh? Okay, there's a start bit and a stop bit. Then there's this thing called the parity bit. Uh. Parity bit is an error checking bit eh, for your information. Eh? And then also the parity got this thing called even and odd. Okay. So the start bit and the stop bit usually they are alternate. Eh? So in usually in this example here, my start bit. Eh? Now if you see the off, eh? you see the you see my slide there, the off, right? Off means zero eh? for your information, eh? just for clarity. Eh? Off means uh means zero. Eh? So if I also type it out here, means uh zero. Eh? Okay, binary zero eh? to be precise. Okay, zero means binary zero. Eh? Okay, and then of course, if it's on, uh, it's the opposite. Uh. On means uh, binary uh, one. Uh. Okay, just to share. Okay, then they got this thing called the parity bit. Now, I think, uh, okay, much has been said. Uh, now, I don't think I want to go further to describe this thing because I think my video already got covered this thing. Eh, to explain, because it takes a little while to explain the parity bit, what it does. Okay, so uh, so if, but you always remember why we are doing this. The parity bit is an error checking bit. Okay, you must remember it's an error checking. That means that let's say for example you got two machines, right? Two computers, they try to communicate with one another. Okay, how we how you how to know whether when they are talk communicating the data that they send the data is it correct or wrong? Is there integrity for the data? Okay, so they can actually set the the parity bit. They must initially uh, at the start uh, uh, agree first what is the parity. So the parity is for one bit error checking. Okay, so it's one bit. Uh. So in case your data inside the one bit error when you transmit out, uh, maybe along the way got suddenly got like thunderstorm. Right now uh, I'm looking at my sky there, it's like gonna rain soon. Eh. Right, there's a thunderstorm. So the uh, thunderstorm maybe there's a causes some electrical surge uh, uh, or lightning. Uh. Electrical, not, not the thunderstorm, more on the lightning, right? electrical uh, lightning. Okay, cause electrical search. Then your data, when you transmit your time, got corrupted, right? So you're actually supposed to send uh, 001, that is 001, but who knows when you transmit because of the error, right? The, the data becomes 000, right? So when the receiver receives this 000, how I know this 000 is the data, is it right or wrong? Uh, okay, this is where the parity comes in. The parity is to check, okay? So something for you to take note. Uh. So there are two types of parity. One is even, one is odd. Uh. Okay, so please take note. Eh. Now the detail of the description one, I leave it for the video to, to uh, cover. Okay, so uh, maybe after you all watch it, you're still not sure, uh, you all can WhatsApp, uh, then you, you ask me. Eh. Okay, but I think it's quite clearly explained. Uh, because the, the other lecturer who saw my video say the video is a bit quite clear, it's quite clear. And it helps you help you lah. Okay, so just take note that the odd or the even parity is for error checking bit. So these are extra bits that you will put on top of your existing data. So let's say for example, I give you an example. If you look at this at the bottom slide, this thing here. Now this whole data is called one frame. Okay, one frame. Okay, a frame. Data must be frame up, right? So it's called a frame. Okay. 
So let's say you want to transmit this character G, for example, right? Uh, in addition to the 8 bit data, so right, 8 bits, right? You can see on the uh, slides there. The 8 bit data, okay, if I may just, okay, okay, so maybe you all can see better. Okay. The 8 bit data here, right, I hope you can see. The 8 bit data also include a start bit, okay, one start bit, one parity bit, one stop bit. Okay, but sometimes the stop bit can be two bits, uh, so depend on the question. Eh. Read the question. Uh. Okay, so total, right, the number of bits, uh, so 8 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, right, 8 plus 3 more bits, right, so total is 11 bits. Eh. You understand what I mean? So this 11 bit forms one frame, uh, what we call it. Okay, one frame. So in order to transmit one character, you send a frame. Okay, so just to let you know. Uh, okay. Now, uh, I'm not sure also whether you come across this term. Uh, they, they also mentioned uh, now. So basically, imagine the data bits are something like ping pong balls, uh, if you want to think about it. Okay? All the, so the, 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 the binary bits transmit one by one. One bit at a time, they get pushed out. Okay? It's like a bit like, uh, how to say, maybe like a domino, you know, those kind of domino game. You got one, one plank after another, all stack out, right? You push one plank, they'll keep pushing. Like, uh, so basically, it's like pushing one information one bit at a time okay so one bit by one bit the data gets transmitted all right and in the serial communication or in any communication right they always talk about uh frames uh, i'm not sure if you come across uh, or, or not, not separate, uh, board rate uh, the board b a u d uh, okay so uh the data are trans transmitted using this uh, term uh, called uh, board uh, Okay, so uh, bot means, uh, let's say B-A-U-D, uh, the, the name is called bot, and it means one bit per second. Uh, okay, so let's say you've got your transmission speed is 9,600 bot, means that you are transmitting at 9,600 bits per second that you can transmit. Uh, so this one also uh, will be covered, it's all covered inside the video explanation. Uh. Okay, now this one is important, uh, you want to take note of this one. Uh. This one, they give you examples how to calculate the transmission time, the frame, uh, the transmission time. Uh. So you, this one you want to take note. Eh? This one, eh? uh, okay. So let me see what happened to my chat window. Uh. That's a while. Sorry, I'm here with just now that one I snapshot. Right? Uh, why am I saying this? Everybody is still there. You're still there. Okay, I think I accidentally closed the PowerPoint. So sorry about that. Let me call back the PowerPoint again. Sorry. Yeah. Sometimes I might randomly just call some names. Uh, yeah, if you all answer me, then I think you, you all are still there. Uh, I hope. Okay, so this one. Okay, uh, where was I? Okay, I was here. Sorry, uh, there's an aeroplane flying fly, fly past my, my estate. Okay, Chi Xiang, are you there? Chi Xiang? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so basically, uh, yeah, so what I have here is a board. Uh, so it's in the, it means that, let's say, for example, I got 9,600 board. Okay, it means that I'm, sorry, uh, B, B, A, U, D. Yeah, sorry. Okay, uh, I think. okay, so it means that I'm transmitting at 9,600 bits per second. Uh. So, okay, so let's say you are given the calculation, uh, there will be this uh, simple calculation question. Eh? Okay, for example, it tell you, uh, can you determine what is the transmission speed? Eh? To transmit one frame. Okay, actually it's very simple. Uh, to calculate the transmission time to transmit one frame. Remember, one frame means the total number of bits. Uh, okay, so in this case, for example, in this example here, I got a total 
number of bits is 11 bits, right? How I get 11 bits, actually, it will be given to you. Eh? Right? Mm -hmm. 8 data bits, 1 start bit, 1 parity, 1 stop. Eh? So 11 bits, right? So in order to calculate the time, it's very simple because uh, bot means uh, number of bits per second, right? So if you want to calculate the time, eh? so you take 11 bits, eh? for example, you take 11 uh, bits, eh? which is the total number of bits in that frame, okay, you divide by the speed, uh, the setting of your system speed. Uh, okay, usually last time in the good old days, we use this thing called modems. Uh. I'm not sure if you know uh, nowadays, but nowadays you hardly find uh, they use these modems, uh, yeah, the transmission speed. Uh. Okay, so you take this one, divide by the 9600 baud uh, uh, to give you the timing. So in this case, right, let's say for example, uh, is in, the, in the example, 1.15 millisecond uh, is the time taken. Uh, is the time, okay, is the time transmission, uh, the time to time taken, time needed, uh, okay, for a frame. Uh, you understand? To transmit one frame, uh, you need this amount of time. Okay. So imagine, let's say, I need to transmit the letter SOS, uh, let's say. Uh, so uh, you all tell me, uh, if I want to transmit a word, uh, Okay, uh, a word, uh, okay, uh, SOS, right? So how many, how many character am I, is, are there? And work out. Uh. So what do I do? If I need to transmit this character, uh, what is the time taken to transmit the, this three, this three, uh, this SOS, the word SOS? How, how long will you take to transmit? Anybody? And maybe you all can give some response. Uh. Yeah, otherwise, very lonely here. Just talking to the four walls in my room. We two, three computers, no, two computers, two screen, three screen, two computers, one camera facing me. Okay. Anybody? Point three. Uh. How to get? Uh. How to get point three? Can you share? Come on. How do you get point three? Three over. Uh, okay, maybe you need to clarify a bit. Now remember the okay, just to clarify. Okay, um good 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 try, good try. But it's not three bits, I eh, remember. Uh, okay, it's you need you see uh, okay. Three character, right? You remember SOS, three character. Three one character need how many frame? Uh need how many bits? Uh, so you can you can do it a simple way. Uh no, one, one frame, uh, one frame got how many bits? Just now in the question, uh, one frame. Okay, as, assuming we follow this PowerPoint slide here. Okay. 11 bits, yes, correct, Robina, thank you. Eh. So 11 bits, right? So if you, now in this case, because you need to transmit three character, uh, okay, you need 33 bits, eh, am I right? Uh? 33 bits. So you need total, uh, total number of bits, uh, total number of uh, bits. Uh, is 33 right 33 bits right or what you can do you can do also this or right? you just now do the same thing i did earlier right because just now i share you that you take 11 bits right if you look at my earlier message that i typed there uh, okay uh, so i retype that thing there okay i see whether i can paste uh, okay it cannot paste uh. Okay, so basically what you do is that you 11 bits, right, is for one frame. Uh, one frame means one character, right? You take 11 bits divided by 9, 6, oh, right, earlier, eh, right? All right, you get 1.15 millisecond, right? But 1.15 millisecond means is for one character. Eh. But here you got three characters, so literally you need to times three, eh, multiply, okay? Multiply, multiply by three. Yeah, the answer multiplied by 3. What's the answer? Can somebody help me? 1.15 times 3. Eh? What do you get? That will be the total time to transmit the, the, the word SOS. Uh, 3.45. Uh, correct. Thank you very much. Anybody got differing answer? Should be correct. Uh? Should be, yeah, correct. Uh? 3.45. So that is for three, uh, a word of three character SOS. Okay, now if I tell you, uh, let's say, if I tell you to transmit this, uh, what, will, what, what will it be different? Eh? I'll give you another example. You look at my chat message. Huh? Okay, if I want to send out this message, eh, 
So how many correct? How many frames do I need? Now I ask you. Eh? How many frames? You tell me. Eh? How many frames I need eh? to transmit this thing that I've sent you with the the if the open and open and but the open code right? Open and close. So how many? With that is also consider. Eh? Don't forget eh? You need when you transmit that right. Is in addition to the word SOS. Uh, okay. SOS is a what is a word that when they use for emergency, right? Save our soul or something like that, right? Uh, okay. When the emergency maybe in the ship, uh, the ship kept silent. Somebody hey SOS and eh, help. Uh, okay. So how many how many character are here? Anybody? Yeah, that's the five. Yes, very good. Huh? Correct. Chong Lui, thank you. Five. Five character. Because why are the, the codes huh, are also considered as a character? How, how do we know? Very simple. If I scroll you back to just down the yeah, good huh? Thanks, huh? Chong Lui. Okay, the there is ASCII table right now. You see here. Now all these things are everything, every character is individualized in from this table. Huh? So you see, even the codes, right? Is considered one character. Huh? So you are absolutely right. Huh? Uh, just now the message that I typed for you, right, is actually five character. Eh? Okay, so in this case, uh, your just now the answer 1.15 millisecond, assuming the same scenario, uh, the 11 bits one, right, you have to times five, okay, to get the total transmission time. Okay, I hope that clears up uh, this part here. You can also refer to the video uh, if you're not very sure. Go and check out, look at the video, you, you reinforce your learning. Uh. So there are other examples here, okay, which I, I will just touch on briefly. So there are other scenarios, okay, they will tell you, okay, usually the information they have to give you the, this thing, uh, they have to give you the, this thing, eh, the information. They will tell you what is the baud rate, the transmission speed, some calculation questions, uh, okay, might, will, will pop out. Eh. They will give you, or give you a scenario, a system that is talking to computer, talking to you, or this computer talking to a modem, this, this computer talking to a printer or whatever. Eh. Okay, they will tell you what is the baud rate. Okay, they will tell you the frame is like how many database, okay, and so on and so forth. Right? How many parity, uh, what only usually is one parity, okay, start B, stop B, those kind of things. Eh? So for example, over here. So in this case here, you have another system, okay, with a different um, number of bits per frame. So in this case, this particular one has so happened to have 10 bits, all right, because this one uses uh, seven data bits, okay. Now, so in order to calculate the transmission uh, time for one frame, okay, or one character, if you like, pretty, pretty much the same, same the, mean the same thing. So what you do is that you take 10 bits divide by the board, right, to get, in this case, 0 0.5 millisecond is the time taken to transmit the one frame. One frame. In this case, the one frame means one is 10 bits. In this example, 10 bits, and it's for one character. Okay, so if you need to transmit the letter it's, uh, or the string A, B, C, you need, just need to multiply by 3, for example. Okay, so I think this one should be quite clear. Eh? I'm not going to go through the this one already. I think should be more or less there because I want to do some hands-on lab view with you guys. Huh? Alright, and then probably go and read out my, watch out my video. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is also on this RS-232, the serial communication. Okay, serial communication can is also a very popular type of uh, communication protocol. Okay, so uh, this one, right, uh, you also can see, watch it there. Okay, RS-485 is a type of communication still widely used by the industry. Eh? The lecture not, not in mail, uh, somebody say. Lecture not, not uploaded in mail, is that so? Let me just do a quick check, uh, sorry. Uh. Thanks for bringing up the one. Let me check. Uh, lecture notes. Are you at the topic four? This one is in topic four. Uh, may I just check eh, to make sure I'm, I'm loading the mail at this side uh, just to check. Yeah, don't have a uh, topic four uh, just to say topic four serial communication. Uh, topic four is on serial, serial com, uh, serial com. Okay, let me just quickly check. Uh. You all don't have the slides that uh, you are saying. Y'all don't have the slides. Uh. Okay, maybe uh, uh, what I can do. 
okay, if you want, uh, if you don't mind, uh, I can attach the slide and send it off to you right now. Uh. I mean, of course, I can upload it. Eh. But if you do your mind, can I see whether I can or not? I don't know whether I can. I can attach the slide. Uh. If you want, uh, I do it now. I do it now. Eh. But I attach it to you guys. Don't know whether y'all can see, can, you can receive or not. I mean, I can do it now. I can upload it now. Uh. Just a moment. I upload the slides. You see whether you all can retrieve or not, you know, but I have to upload, that one will take another few more minutes uh, to upload it in uh, in mail if it's not there. Surprise, eh? I thought it's there. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Yeah, this one, serial com. Okay, set. Okay, can you all see? It's in the chat, uh. maybe you all just download, uh, see whether you can or uh. not. Oh, oh, I have uh, all the also you have it. Uh, don't know it's serial com. Uh, this is the one. Okay. Oh, when somebody say when you download the lab view, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, so maybe you all take a look. Uh, can uh, uh, Justin. Okay, but it's uh, it's just I just send you it to the the chat here. Uh, the intro to okay. Uh, I will carry on, uh, carry on. Okay, so basically, uh, RS-485 is a type of protocol. There are different types of uh, serial communication protocol. RS-232, RS-485. These are industrial standards eh, that people use. Eh. Now, there are some advantages to the RS-485. Uh, this thing they, they use is a is an electrical character, uh, electrical standard, uh, so called, for data transmission. Eh. So uh, maybe okay. What I do, uh, I will cover this part here. Okay, visa. Okay, another thing is called uh, this thing called visa. Okay, uh, visa is not your credit card or uh, your master or your visa. Okay, visa is uh, also a communication type of uh, protocol. Okay, communication uh, protocol. Okay, uh, and it is. Uh, Used for uh, visa stands for virtual instrument software architect uh, architecture. Okay, it's used for uh, communicating, especially for instrument. Eh. Okay, so I think it's pretty important that you all will get to appreciate this. Uh, okay, so things like uh, communicating through uh, instrument, it could be plotter, printer, some uh, serial devices, and so on. Eh. Alright, so uh, LabVIEW is able to support this uh, visa. Eh. I remember uh, in the good old days when I was doing my PhD at that time, uh, I was a student, undergrad student, right? I was doing my PhD. My PhD. I was given a quite a, a difficult task eh, back then. It was about 20 years ago, 1998. Yeah, uh, no, about 2000 at that time. Uh, about, so, yeah, 20 years. Uh, so, I was asked to write a software instrument. Eh, virtual instrument uh, using lab view uh, okay so uh, and then I was supposed to write this lab view to talk to a very expensive uh, oscilloscope okay it's called LaCroix oscilloscope uh. yeah so because uh, my PhD required me to collect a lot of data about high voltage eh. so I need to use this very expensive uh, oscilloscope then to communicate and use lab view uh. so at the time well, it was quite um, new to me, quite challenging in a sense, but I look, luckily there was lab view uh, back then because a lot of the instrument already got the, the drivers that come with it. Eh. So even lab view support the, the instrument driver through the use of visa. Eh. So I had to communicate quickly, put up a system eh, yeah, using the lab view and, and I was able to do that uh, quite successfully. So, um, so it was quite, a, quite something quite nice. Uh. So something like that, uh, this is an example. Uh, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Eh. So you are using, let's say, a computer, right? The picture is a bit old, uh, picture is a bit old but the concept is still the same. Eh. Alright, so you use a uh, serial communication to, to communicate with the instrument. Basically, what you want is to data transfer. Uh, right? You want, to, you want to take data from that instrument and then transfer it over to your PC for analysis. Eh. Okay, so they use this thing called uh, Visa. Oh, so just to share with you. Okay, 
So I think other than that, okay, why I want to move on? Uh, so this is the serial comma. Uh, now I, I need expect you all to please spend some time to go and watch the 30 minute video, uh, the 5 minute, then the 20 minute, and then another 5 minutes. Uh, go and watch that video, uh, okay? Because uh, you got quiz coming uh, up, upcoming quiz, uh, it will test you on those things that just, just, don't know, I just told you. Like for example, calculate the serial transmission. Sure, we'll ask one thing. I haven't seen the quiz question uh, because to be quite honest with you, uh, you know, so far the this quiz one and quiz two is the one that I said uh, because the coming up two more quizzes are uh, quiz three and quiz four is set by other lecturer and uh, the other two lecturer. So they are setting one each. Uh, okay, Miss Chin and uh, Madam Tam. Uh, so they are they are gonna set uh, the quiz. So I don't know what they are gonna set, uh, but the concept is it's pretty around here. Uh, I mean the things I thought it will be is it will be around here and uh, you can't run away. So they're gonna set something, this kind of quizzes short quizzes based on this information that is provided and also the the stuff that is on the video like the, just now the three part video series uh, on topic four so please go and watch those video uh. okay now I, well, the only thing i didn't cover is the part on the parity bit eh. so that one need a bit of explanation which i, I want to leave it leave it out here eh. let you all watch the video huh? okay so uh okay what's going on uh? Right, so maybe I will close now, close this PowerPoint. Uh. Okay, I'm going to dive straight to the lab four. Okay, so uh, can you all please, can you all have the copy of your lab four ready? Uh? Can you all please load your lab four, the Microsoft, I think it's a, it's a Microsoft Word version. Uh. Okay, can you please help us, can you load up your lab four? Uh? Lab four, uh, lab sheet, please. And also launch your lab viewer. Uh. Okay, we will do some simple example coding. Okay, launch your let me. Wei Liang ah. Wei Liang, your 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 laptop got left view not? I hope so. Wei Liang, are you there? see the message you respond now uh, yeah. thanks okay so uh for the rest okay uh let's open up your launch your lab view first uh, okay and uh okay so now i also just now uh shared with you this link right i hope you got download uh, okay this link you see my screen right by the way you are looking at my screen now i've just now downloaded this folder uh, this i i hope i hope you all have uh, downloaded uh, can you download the the that folder piece, the Dropbox one? Make sure you download. Then you must unzip first, oh. So you right click, ah, uh, unzip. I think you all, I don't need to teach you all. You all should know, eh. After you download from the thing, right, you need to unzip, eh, or extract. Eh. Uh, okay. So after extracting, right, you should see this lab four stuff, eh. uh, Okay, couple of things there. Can you make sure you all do that first, eh? Well, I just give you like thirty seconds, eh. Yeah. Can you please? Uh, anybody, if you've got any, any problem downloading uh, or anything, please uh, shout out uh, or voice out. Okay, you was, after you extracted this folder, right, you should see something like this. Eh. Yeah. Can you please do that, eh? everyone? Seriously, fire lah. Your your class all fire already. Last week was quite chatty. Eh? Last week was quite chatty. Eh? Oh, you must set up. Uh, oh, where is the lab for? Oh, you mean the the lab sheet? Is it? Yeah, it's in the mail. Eh? If you don't mind. Uh, lab sheet is in topic three. Yeah, thank you very much. 
uh, Justin to everyone. Yeah, it's under course documents, right? Uh, okay. Uh, course documents under wait, uh, under data acquisition. Yeah, here. Eh. Topic two actually. Eh. Topic two, yeah. Topic two uh, under lab four. Lab sheet, this one. Okay, so if you click on it, you will see something along this line. Yeah, okay, you should see something like that. It's a you got a you got a Microsoft version uh, the at uh, the MS Word, so you all can type inside. Uh. Okay. Now a couple of exercises uh, the objective of these, right? Basically, uh, of this lab. Now, this thing called LVs, uh, we are not going to do. Uh, so, maybe you want to take note first. Because I, I got your couple of messages. You all asked me, uh, which one do you do? Okay, so the LVs one uh, totally must remove. Uh, it's at the back. Eh. Uh, so, you all take note first. Eh. So, when you see the LVs one, uh, don't do it. Eh. You cannot do it. Uh, you don't have the hard way. Eh. LVs stand for what? Uh? LVs is not the LVs Presley, uh, the singer. Maybe not your, even not, not my time also, eh? my parents' time. Eh? Elvis is a uh, laboratory engine, uh, lab, uh, is a, wait, laboratory, uh, what, uh, I can't remember, labor, uh, some, uh, okay, I suddenly cannot remember why it's an acronym. Elvis is basically a prototyping board uh, for virtual instrument, one, eh? okay? So it's an it's a acronym, eh? okay? A acronym for a, a board, eh? a board's name. Uh. So there, offhand, I cannot remember what does it, what does the acronym stand for. Okay, but doesn't matter. Okay, so LVs one, uh, don't do, uh, don't cover, don't do. Okay, because we don't have the hardware. Alright, but what we can do, we will try to investigate the first few part uh, on the exercises. Eh. Okay, for the USB uh, demo board, the deck one. Uh. Okay, you remember I shared with you all the video, right? On the remember the USB demo board that one, which I think I show you last week. Eh? If you cannot recall, uh, let me show you. I, I by the way, uh, uh, my the other thing is that my YouTube channel, right? Um, I try to keep up keep the YouTube link, uh, quite periodically, uh. So that means that I hope. Okay, so that means that every usually end of the lesson, as I said last week, uh, I try to make sure that the, the links uh, on my YouTube recording, uh, that means the YouTube, right, this one uh, is up to date. Uh. Okay, so it's uh, over here. Uh, this one is my the home based learning video, uh, the one I created. So every week, as I, after finish lesson, I will take some, give me some time, uh, you will convert and then I'll upload it there. Oh, this one is on the YouTube, the, H, the home based learning one. Uh. Now, now, I think last week I shared with you this link, right? Which is the, wait, uh, let me see. Okay, this one. Uh, uh, okay, this one. Okay, this one will still be important. Uh, this one, uh, the, the USB uh, 609, the demo box. Uh. This one, okay, which is this uh, video here. Uh, okay, this one, uh, so you all know, take note. Uh, this one, this video is the video that I shared uh, last week, right? Which is uh, over here. I'm not going to play here, just to show you. Okay, just to show you. Uh, I'm not going to play the video. Uh, this is the one that we shared. Uh, this one, eh? uh, this video is this thing here, right? which is I uh, shared with you last week is on the link there. Now, the most important thing is this, the piece of information here, which is the setting for the, whether is it analog input or analog output, you need to know what is the setting, the channel. Eh? Okay, for example, here analog input, I want to look at temperature sensor, right? As an example, the temperature sensor, I need to look for this thing called analog input. Eh? But AI, uh, AI stands for analog input. And zero is the channel number, so it's channel zero, channel number zero. You see, then of course, uh, I also got AI, uh, AI one. Ah, uh, there you see, ah, uh. uh, okay. So this is the part. Eh. So for example, the light sensor, the LDR, is connected to this thing called the AI one. AI one stands for analog input channel one. Okay. 
Now, another thing is that the other parts of the thing, I already explained it here on the last uh, se session. So you got analog output. Analog output is AO, uh, channel zero. You got AO is analog output, channel number zero, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this one I won't I won't have time to go through it. Eh? The video you can you can watch it offline, eh? you can watch it yourself. Yes, this video out of it. Okay, so today's session, right? I'm gonna be quite focused. Okay, we will try to do some activity. Eh? Okay, now you can see that okay, these are the description. Now we will maybe look at uh okay, now maybe we look at this one on uh, the lamp brightness control. This one. Okay, how to create this thing eh? okay with whatever you have eh? okay this part eh? lamp brightness control now the the simplicity of this thing is that in order to do that eh? it's pretty simple i give you the workflow eh? the workflow is like that eh? okay the workflow okay the software and the coding strategy and eh? diagram is like that so you need to send uh, in order to control the lamp brightness right okay we we you don't have a physical box now eh? definitely right you don't have, everyone don't have the hardware the, the demo box okay so but what we can do we can do some simulation that means we can send some uh so-called output voltage analog output voltage using your left view front panel okay and then you can use the simulator deck now somebody asked me uh sir hey, what's the function of the the daq assistant eh, in the last class eh? somebody asked me you put inside the left view right you don't really see anything eh? Yeah, which is correct. I agree you. Your, your DAQ demo box, the, the assistant, right? You create now, right? Without the hardware, you won't be able to see anything. Like for example, here. Okay. If if I imagine if I create this program, uh, that view, right? With this thing here, I got the control here, the lamp output voltage. Then I created a DAQ assistant called lamp brightness control. Then a simple while loop, then one stop button. Now. Okay, I run, I cannot, I cannot run this thing definitely because why? Obviously, I it's, the answer is pretty obvious. I don't have the hardware, right? right? You send the voltage to the thing, the thing control control what? Eh? You send the voltage to where? Uh, okay, you don't have the hardware, which is understandable, right? So you cannot turn on the lamp, physical lamp, definitely, lah, right? But what you can do is that we can put the assist, the create the DAQ assistant first, okay? And then later on, right, when we are back in lab, really, and back in campus, uh, then you connect, then you can run, you can see the thing, uh, you can see the thing physically turn on. Eh. You, you understand what I mean? Now, in fact, uh, I also shared with you uh, in my, in my, uh, in my mail, uh, I'm not sure if you saw it also. In the mail, right, I got another set of videos, uh, that actually show you the physical uh, control of the, the devices on it. Okay, but uh, maybe I'll show you later. Uh. Okay, now, okay, so everybody, uh, now I need your help. Uh. So let's quickly get ourselves pieced together. Okay, I need your help. Eh. So we need to, you already down, you downloaded my Dropbox, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to move this thing out. Okay, okay you already downloaded the the link ready so let's try to figure out what we're gonna do uh. okay okay the idea is this uh, i'm going to show you this this one was done by an, the other lecturer uh, okay on the lamp brightness control eh. so she created this eh, this lady miss chin yeah so she i just share you this thing okay so this is what she has created this one you don't have, uh, this program you don't have. Uh, but you, what you have was the picture of this lamp brightness. Uh, you got the picture of this. Uh, inside your, just now the thing that you downloaded. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, this one, let me show you. So the thing is that, okay, after your downloaded, I hope you got unzip already. Uh, this is the things that you have. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, okay, so this is what y'all have. Okay, so y'all got this couple of these uh, light bulb images. Uh, I call it image one, image two, image three, and image four. Uh. So it ranges from when the light bulb is switched off, okay, to the when it's uh, slightly dim, uh, slightly brighter, and then the brightest. Uh. So you got this uh, couple of images, all right? So what she did, uh, this lecturer did for us was that she created this little program, as you can see over here. 
So when I run, okay, what it does is it simulates the turn on of the voltage. So now, okay, two volt, uh, okay, she's trying to simulate this thing. When it's three volt, you see something like that. And when it's five volts, uh, uh, okay, you can see, uh, so whether you can see. So you can control this in this way. You understand? So it's at this. Okay, so there is at one volt interval range. Uh, okay, when it's between zero volt to one volt, it's off. Eh. It means it's, your light bulb is switched off. Okay. So when it is from one to two volts, okay, it's still switch off. It's when three, three, uh, two to three, you will get the thing turn on, slightly dim. Then from three volt to four volt, you get, okay, the the bulb something like that, and then a slightly brighter. And then of course when the voltage is at four to five, then it's fully lit up, okay, something like that. This is a, a program that she did. Okay, but what she did was you need to use this thing called picture ring. Uh, okay, I'm not going to show you the code first. Okay, I'm not going to show you the code first. We will try to create this one. Okay, in here. So that sort of fulfills this part of the exercise part uh, uh, for the exercise one, eh, where we try to build a lamp brightness control VI. Okay. Uh, Okay, so uh, now I need you guys for your help. Uh. Okay, so maybe to start, uh, okay, what we can do, because the way she created hers uh, is quite a bit, quite uh, quite long, uh, a bit long-winded uh, in a way. Uh, this one, uh, the code, uh, I don't mind to show you the code, uh, but I find that maybe can sort of improve a bit. Uh. Okay, this one. Eh. So what, maybe, okay, I'll share you, share you the code. Eh. Now, a bit long-winded, eh? you all may struggle to understand. This is the code. Ah. Ah, okay, this is the, the code. A bit long-winded. So basically, what she did was she created this uh, DAQ assistant. Ah. But again, this is through the use of the simulated deck. Ah. Okay, now maybe you all can... Uh, okay, a bit long-winded. Ah. I find that the, this one, okay, lah. I mean... Okay, so this was just now the, the code that you saw uh, when I run. Uh, so she tried to use the function uh, to control this thing, eh, the lamp brightness. Of course, this part is the simulation. Uh, I just want to share. You want to highlight first. Uh, this part that I've just highlighted, uh, this part, right, that you can see here. Okay, the one in the gray box uh, is the simulation one. Uh, simulation, you understand? Simulated simulation. I mean, you see on the left view, eh? but the actual one, right? This part is the real thing only when you have the hardware. Okay, so the DAQ assistant part is currently is simulated because I use I use the simulated deck to do. Uh, okay, so this one you can't you can't show anything at the moment. Eh? The program just send the voltage, but it does nothing over here, it stops just stops here. Eh? Okay. But this one at the bottom, you can show something. This one. You understand what I mean? Okay. So, uh, okay. So maybe uh, you can take note first. We can try to create one. Uh. Okay. We try to create one now. Okay. Something like this. We, need, we will create something along this line. Okay. So maybe you all can follow along. You try. Okay. We will do this one. Okay. So first thing first, create a new uh, lab view. Uh. Can you all help me, help me do that? Create a new lab view program. Start from fresh. Uh, start from fresh. Create a new lab view program. Power left, right. Okay, do that first. Follow along, I uh, guys. Try to follow along. I try to keep the your text chat box in, in check. Uh, so I'm also multitasking. Uh, press uh. Yeah, I need to do this and then at the same time watch for any incoming uh, chat messages. Eh. Okay, so help me first. Now, what you need to do is, uh, okay, let's do that. Uh. Go to structures. Let's put a while loop. Eh. Everyone, open up your lab view. Wakey, wakey, everybody. Sure, try to follow along. Uh, what I have here is a while loop. Okay, can you do that for me? Eh? Create a control. And this one need to submit one, uh, by the way. Uh, then you all will wakey wakey already. This one need your submission. Uh. Okay, create this stop button. Okay. 
Okay, please follow, hoi. guys. Don't fall asleep, hoi. Uh, I know y'all uh, uh, difficult, right? I don't know why y'all, I mean, yeah, I, I trust, uh, this one based on, based on trust and integrity. Y'all do it. Okay, good, good, good. Follow, uh, follow. Okay, create a while loop, right? Okay, after that, what you do is that I'm going to, now, if you recall, uh, now, I also, uh, inside your, the link that you downloaded, I also purposely copy this picture for you. Eh? I don't know whether you can see it. Eh? This picture, eh? the DAQ, the setting, the one. Eh? This one, I want you to, can you please uh, double click on this thing? Now, this one is the picture eh? of the settings, you know what I mean? The DAQ, in order to create the simulated DAQ assistant, right, the deck, right, you need to know which channel you're, you are, uh, using ma, all right. So in this case, because we are doing the lamp brightness control, uh, is a uh, a o uh, analog output channel zero. Eh. You understand what I mean? So yeah, we want the a o uh, analog output. So I'll type it here. So what we want is uh analog output uh. Okay, I want channel channel what uh, channel zero. Uh. Okay, based on this picture. Now, maybe a good way uh, just to share you, you, there's a good way to copy this picture inside your lab view uh, if you want. Uh. Okay, I'll teach you how, okay, you all follow it. Uh. What you do is that you go to edit, uh. you import picture. Uh. Everyone, uh, try, uh. go to import picture to the clipboard. So you click ready, uh. okay, now then the, there will be a window that pop out. Uh. Right, they ask you what you want to import. So I want this picture. So you select the picture that you downloaded earlier. Eh? The, let view this one. Eh? This picture. The USB 6009 DAQ, right? Demo box label. Ah, this one, very, the most, one of the most important piece of information. Eh? This thing. Okay, you import first. Now when you click OK, nothing, ha nothing happens because they just copy uh, the, the picture into your clipboard. Okay, nothing happened, right? Then what you do is that you go to edit. And you paste. Okay, you click paste. Okay, uh, the picture comes out. Okay, so maybe you want to just uh, resize the picture. Just put it there for reference only. Uh. Okay, can you do that, please? Now, I think in this uh, program, right, okay, I think, okay, the other thing I want you all to do, uh, to make sure that when you all submit, uh, hey, uh, let your friends, everybody do by themselves, uh, please, eh, don't copy, program. I know software easy to copy, eh, just send a file to somebody, eh. so I want you to put your name, eh. okay, put your name, uh, you notice that sometimes I just randomly pick somebody's program and then I just ask questions, right? Uh, okay, put your name, okay? Your group. Yeah, because to be honest, I'm not saying that I don't trust or what. Uh, I just want to make sure you all do your work, uh, okay? For the for the benefit of you, uh, everybody. Eh? Okay, so it's good that you all try to do it. Don't get too offended after when you check on me. You see, you don't trust me or what? Eh? It's not like that. Uh, I just randomly pick on it. It's really by random, eh? I just randomly uh oh. so don't get offended eh. if i if i offend you i'm sorry yeah uh. if you feel offended right uh, it's not uh, i i'm not that, that's not my intention i just random uh. i just ran by serious pure randomness i just pick oh okay so then how uh okay so you pick it uh, okay so uh your one step ahead okay so you daq assistant you choose voltage or current okay we want okay yeah you're one step ahead uh. so what i want is to put the daq assistant right so how to do go to your measurement io uh look for your ni mx look for the daq assistant right this one everybody uh, try to uh, follow along justin you are one step ahead uh. sorry uh, just wait for daq assistant okay select daq assistant and drop right Okay, so uh, just a while, you will see this window launch. Ah, okay, so here right now, you have to be very careful here. Eh. Over here, what do you do uh, actually when you see this thing pop up, right? Okay, what do you want to do? Ask yourself one question first. This one is uh, output or input. Eh. Always ask yourself this question. What do you think? The 
ask for one. Eh? What do you think? Yes, it's an output. Eh? Remember, eh? you must be very clear what you're doing. Eh? Okay, sometimes when you're doing things, eh, you must think first. Eh? Okay, this one is an output, right? Because I want to send the at both page eh? uh, okay, to answer your question. Eh? Uh, Justin, yeah, we want to generate, right? So when we generate, we want also to generate an analog output voltage. Eh? Okay, so help me to choose the voltage, uh, analog output voltage. Okay, so select that. Okay, now which channel? Uh, okay, this is the part where the label comes in useful. Look at the picture at the top. Uh. This one, eh? this is the, the, the picture that I, with my finger, uh, that one is my, my index finger that I'm trying to point it there. Uh. Uh, this picture, eh? okay, we, we, what are we doing? Uh? We want to control the lamp, right? Right, the lamp, right? So we want analog output, right? So which channel? Look at here. You only use one only, uh, AO channel zero. Eh? Okay, so I choose this one. Okay, AO channel number zero. Eh? So you select this one, then you click finish. Okay, so we are trying to configure. Uh, okay, some more, more thing to do. Eh? So this thing pop up, right? Okay, so I minimize a bit. Okay, this, uh, this thing pop up, you should also pop up on your screen. Uh, this one, okay. So what I need to do, I make sure I set this thing, the, the settings, uh, the signal output, you need to define a range. Uh. So the minimum is zero, maximum is five. Okay, then this one you default, don't do anything. Eh. Okay, this one is there, you don't choose anything. Okay, and uh, one sample on demand, I think should be there. Then there's a, at the bottom there, there should be an OK button. Eh. Remember to click OK. Uh, then here, there's an OK button. Eh. Very, uh, quite most like, quite hidden uh, at the bottom. Uh, remember to click the OK. Uh. Okay, so we configure that for the analog output. Eh. Can you do this, uh, guys, ladies, everyone? And please try to follow along. Click OK. Alright, so after clear, okay, this thing is configuring. Uh, okay, you will see the, the lab view will configure, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, well. You see, you can see this thing is trying to configure. Okay, I think done really. Is it done? Okay. okay. So you come out again. Okay, sorry, maybe I accidentally click on it. Eh? I click OK. You will see this uh, pop up menu there, the window, uh, small little window there. Uh, Lagging, I think you all will see on your screen. Eh? The rest are uh, y'all got any problem? Okay, seems okay already now. Then can yours okay? Anyone got any issue? Okay, what I do is that uh, I'm going to create an input for this guy. So let's create a control. Okay, the input data set here. I'm going to right click the input. Uh, I bring my tools palette, the wiring tool. If you forgot where the your tools palette, go to view our uh, tools palette. Okay, go to your tools palette. Okay, enable the automatic tool. Okay, bring your tool to the input of the data there. Right click, create control. Okay, you will see that Lab View creates this thing called data, right? By default, let's change the name, shall we? Let's call it voltage output. Okay, you notice uh, this one. Right? Okay, but, but you notice that in the lab sheet, uh, 
if you follow along very closely to the lab sheet, uh, they use a slider. I'm not sure you see. They actually use the uh, wait. Let me see. Uh, uh, if you follow your, if you follow along your very carefully your um, lab sheet, right? They they use a slider control and instead of using the voltage. Uh, Okay, maybe we can do that. Lah. Let's try and do that. So maybe, uh, okay, first thing first, let's label this guy. Lah. Can you use your, can you help me select the A2? Ah? A2 on your tools palette. Let's select this one, change the name. Ah. Let's call this lamp brightness control. Can you please do that? Ah? Okay, can you just label, yeah, so I'm going to just label something like that. We don't want upper case, uh, that's not very nice. Let's call it, let's put it lower cap. Lamb. Okay, how about this? Okay, maybe like that. Can you all do that for me, please? Later, I randomly ask somebody to share your screen. Uh. Uh, you all never do, right? Later, I anyhow call one name. Uh. Uh. Okay, I just call random name. Uh. Later, I ask you all to share screen. Uh. Show me your screen. Uh. Or then you all panic. Uh, okay. But I trust that you all will do. Uh. Yes. Yeah, Justin, yes, question. Can talk right can, can on your mic uh, if you want to speak. You have the freedom, liberty to speak. Speaking faster uh, than typing a lot of message, right? Uh, Justin, if you want to speak. The voltage output is a numeric control, yes, it is. So numeric control, you're right. Okay, uh, also uh, just want to wish uh, uh okay, I send you something eh? okay for our before I forget uh, later before N class I forget already for our Muslim friends uh, just want to Wish you all Salamat Hari Raya Habib Fitri. Ya. Okay, so far, okay. Good, uh, thank you very much okay for your positive reply uh, okay so let's move on a bit uh. now I'm gonna quickly just drop uh, okay go to numeric uh. maybe we use the uh, okay let's use the maybe this one now uh, can we use this horizontal pointer slide can you go to your numeric uh? Uh, look for this one maybe we use this one now uh. we try to follow okay can you look locate this thing for me horizontal pointer slide Okay, select and then you drop on your left view from panel. So we will replace that one with this one uh, better. Okay, we will call this uh, voltage output. Uh. Can you please do that? Uh? 
Now, be careful first uh, because I want to set this thing to five votes only. Uh. So, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my text tool uh, to go to the upper range of the 10 there. Right? You see, uh, 10. Make it five. Eh? So, something like that. Let me uh, scale it up uh, so you all can see. So, something like this. So, then the other one, I think I should, I don't need, uh, I delete. Uh, I delete the numeric control. Eh? And I reconnect this thing here. Okay, using a slider instead. Is it okay so far? Ah, like that. So this is what I have. Change the scale again. Very good question. Use the A too. Use the A. You know the A, you know? A for text. Um, you click on your A, right? Then you take the text to mouse over, uh, click on the number 10 there. Then you can change it. Change anything you want. Eh? Uh. Change the 10 to 5, yeah. The reason why we put 5, I hope you know. Uh. You know why we use 5, right? Because what is the maximum voltage range? Or the output just now we set inside the setting remember the configuration there we set from zero minimum is zero maximum five right remember that was what we did just now inside the lamp brightness control the daq assistant if you uh, why i set to five this is the max okay so this is what i have uh. now i think it's a good time to save uh. why don't you all save your vi go to file save as Save as uh, okay. Maybe call this guy uh, lamp brightness control. Is it, is it okay? Can you please do that? Lamp brightness control dot bi save. Click okay. Just now you saw the demo I showed you, right? The, the video on the, the, the brightness, the, not video, the picture. Eh? So what you need to do, let's try. Eh? Okay, go to, uh, go to the, let me see. Eh? Okay, uh, you will find this thing called ring and e num. Eh? Okay, can you go to the ring and e num? Can you look for this thing called picture ring? Eh? Pick ring. Okay. 
for this thing called pick ring. Can you find right? anybody cannot find? Go to the ring and enum, right? Look for this thing called pick ring, eh? picture ring. Select this picture ring inside and drop on your front banner. This one, okay? Now what you need to do is that after you drop this uh, ring, uh, you will see this thing, this blank uh, inside. So what you need to do, help me right click, because you want to make it into an indicator so that later on we can control the, this picture. It's actually like a, there are only four frames. Uh. So what you need to do is, uh, can you help me change to an indicator? Okay, change to, it must follow, uh, try to follow the instruction yeah, and change to indicator. You cannot find this anywhere on the video. Eh. There's no video eh, at this moment. Okay, change to indicator. Okay, you will see something like this. Right, so now what we're going to do is that we will, after you've done that, already change to indicator. Uh, remember, change it to an indicator. Right click. Okay, I'll repeat that step again. Uh, repeat that step. So initially, it was like that, right? After you drop the pick ring, right click. Okay, change to indicator. Okay, change to uh, indicator. All right, then you can right click. Okay, now let's try and see what you're gonna do. Are we going to? Uh, let's try and see. Uh, select item because currently inside is blank. Uh. Remember, the idea is that I want to put the picture of the the light bulb, uh, the lamp. Uh. So let's try to. Okay. Okay, let's. Okay, that item after can you please follow it we will add that item after we will add in the image there are four images right? i'm going to add in the images one by one so where are the images are before i do that i show you the images are here you can see right purposely label for you just now before the lesson start up i was uh, editing the image name so these are the four images inside your download folder i'm in my window explorer here after you extracted the folder, right? I got this image one, image two, image three, and image four. We are going to make this use of these four images and put it inside. Okay, lamp, uh, lamp image one, image two, image three, image four. I'm going to put them one by one. So I need your help. Eh? So I need to select this picture ring. I'm going to right click. I'm going to add item after. Okay, so I click. All right. Uh, okay, so you notice that I created uh, image, right? Okay, let's see. Uh. Yeah, so basically you will notice that uh, I got this thing. Okay, let's try and recall how to put the image. Uh. Uh, okay, I'm going to put the image inside. Okay, maybe we can visible item. Uh, let's see, uh, digital display. Uh, okay, so can you help me do one thing? Right click, visible item. Turn on the digital display. Turn on this digital display so that I know which frame I am in. So currently, I think uh, if yeah, I have yeah, this one here. So this frame, right? Okay, I see whether I can uh, import the image. Huh? Okay, so what I do, uh, okay. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to uh, go to data operation. Uh, wait, let me see. Uh, just follow now.
Did uh, a little break or not? Anybody? Maybe we take a, can we just do like a five minutes for a little break first? Five minutes and five minutes, y'all go uh, five minutes for a little break. Bio break. Uh. Bio break. I need to close the window. Uh. It's raining. Uh. Just a moment. Uh. Bio break, five minutes. Uh, I think we can start again now. Uh. You all okay? You all can uh, back up. Uh. Minutes, okay. Now what I just now did, uh, okay, maybe what we do, okay, up to this point, any question or uh, just now, up to this picture ring, uh, this one is quite important and you all need to do this part. Do the picture ring. Okay, up to here. Uh. So I will continue, uh, if you allow me, guys, ladies. was okay i didn't do anything eh? so what i do was okay i show you uh, you right click on your picture ring go to visible item uh turn on the digital display okay put, put the digital display on so you will turn on the digital with the tick uh, you will see this thing here there's a number here small little number okay so let's try that first uh. okay can mine is zero yeah because i just now i added a frame eh? Okay, you notice that now maybe, okay, because yours is zero, correct? Okay, you know what I did? Okay, how to change back to zero? You, yours is zero, right? Okay, you stay at zero, eh? Stay at zero first. Uh, come on. 
stay at zero. Yours is should be like that, right? Zero. Okay, zero is fine. Keep it at zero first. Actually, I I yeah, I want to be at zero first. Keep it at zero first. I'll tell you what to do next. Eh? Okay, what you do next, uh, after zero, okay, I'm gonna do the next magic. Eh? So uh I'm going to import picture from clipboard. Okay, so I want to start. There are four states. Uh, basically, I want the, the lamp brightness got four states. First is uh when the lamp is off. Okay. All right, so let's do that first. So I'm going to import picture from clipboard. So when I click, oh, okay, so it's there, right? Uh, okay, so you notice, okay, how I come to here, okay, I go stun one step first. Uh. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, make, you, you make it back to control first, sorry. Benedict, thanks. Uh. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Put it back to change, right click again, change to control first. Make it control later. Finally, then we change indicator. Sorry, sorry. Change it back to control first. So easier, easier to do it. Eh? Not say indicator cannot do, it's easier. Change it back to control first. Ah. So how do you know whether this thing is a control? You see there's a black arrow tip, right? At the picture ring there on the right hand side. Because the thing is going out, ah, flowing out, it's a control. Sorry, ah. change to control first. Ah, okay. Then what I do is that, okay, I'm going to uh, go to edit, ah. go to import picture eh, from clipboard, this one. Go to the top right there, okay, edit, import picture from clipboard. So you click on this, right, uh, left view uh, will pop up this window. Eh. Okay, you ask you which picture you want to import. So I want the first one, when the lamp is off. Okay, please select this one first, image one. Okay, image one, lamp off, uh. select this one, then click okay. Alright, so after you've done that, right, that means that image is already loaded into your clipboard uh, inside your lab view. Eh? Alright, so I'm going to now pull out the image. So what I do is I select this picture ring, right click on this picture ring. Uh. So what you do is that you use the tool, right, select this picture ring, right click on your mouse. Okay, import picture from clipboard. Eh? That means just now you import, you, okay, I, you went into the clipboard and eh? now you and then put it here. So I click over here, the picture will appear. You see? Ah? Ah, this one, maybe some of you may uh, there are some small confusion there. Any issue so far? So what I did was I went to the edit first. I repeat, ah, I repeat one more time. So I go to edit first. Edit, right? I import picture to lab view eh, from outside. Eh. So I, ah, okay, I click on that one, right? I will see this thing. So it asks you what you want to import. So I import the first picture first. One when the lamp is off, okay. Select that already, click OK. All right, so the image now is sitting inside your memory in lab view. Then over here, now I select the picture ring, right? Picture ring, I want the picture to go inside here. So what I do is I right click, I import picture from clipboard, okay. Uh, so the image is now inside the This thing is under frame number zero. Okay, frame zero. Okay, you no know question. Now I want to add the next frame. Eh? So what I do is that that's what I did. How come I got one, right? You were asking. Okay, so I select my picture ring. Select my picture ring, right click, I can see yeah uh, yeah can you uh what do you have there okay we will import picture after uh. let's try and see no. yeah, i think you all get the idea what i'm trying to do uh. i'm trying to import the picture into the clip in here eh. So currently, I got if you if you go to z, this is my zero. Uh. Now I need the next picture. Okay, so how do I do that? So what you do? Okay, you go to edit. Okay, import picture to the clipboard again. Now this time round, I try to select the second image. Uh. Image two when the lamp is dim. Select this image first. So you import this picture. Then click OK. Now what happens is that it goes into your memory in 
view. Then from the picture ring, I right click, I import picture after. Let's try if we see if it works. Eh? Ah, okay. Yeah, then you see what I mean. Uh? So basically, just now was frame zero, right? Sorry, frame zero. Frame zero. Now I because I imported it, I got my next frame. Uh, uh, frame one. Then I got the next image already. Okay, so I will do the same eh, until I got all the four images inside. So this is one. Right. So then I go to edit. I'm going to edit the import the picture one more time from my outside external. So I'm going to select picture image number three. Lamp bright. Okay, then I click OK. So it's inside it. Then I will from after make sure my this indicator is uh, at position one. So I'm going to right click import after. Uh, so you see now I got two. So basically now I got uh zero i no zero is this okay one is this two is this now i'm going to do the third one so again i go to edit import picture from clipboard i'm going to import the last image for the lamp bright the brightest one okay i click i import already then i come to here okay just now i got remember i, I got this right zero i got one i got Two, right from here i'm going to select the picture ring and click import picture after yeah so i got three okay so you see yeah okay, zero okay, image picture image zero image one which is slightly dim image two is a bit brighter and image three is the brightest yeah. okay i got four images yeah. I got one extra here, but I'm going to delete this one. Uh. I'll remove this one. I got one spare one. Uh, just leave it there, lah. Doesn't matter. So I got these following images and eh. image. So if you want to, you can just expand it to see. Ah, uh, so I got something like that. Uh, four uh, images inside. Okay. So each of these picture ring is controlled by an index index number. If you think about it, it's sort of like a. It's not really an array la, but it's uh it's a picture control where you control the frame. Eh? So you got frame zero, frame one, frame two, frame three, frame one, frame two, and frame number three. Eh? Okay, in the interest of time, I might have to move a little bit faster. Okay, because I need to show you the other one also. So, any questions so far? So, I got this picture ring with the four images that we uh, so called uh, imported inside. Anyone got any question? So, I will make a duplicate first. Uh. I will make a throw in a duplicate copy. I'll uh. just put at the bottom. Eh. Okay, this is a duplicate one. You don't have to do this. Uh. I created one duplicate. Eh. How to make the square again? I don't understand what you mean by the question. Eh? Can explain. This one first. Uh, this ring two is a spare. How to make the square again? Uh, with the zero, one, two, three, all the indicator. Is it okay? Right click on this picture ring. Right click visible item. Okay. Uh, make sure you turn on the digital display. So you got the to give you the index ah, so you know which frame you are at. So I started with zero, I got one, I got two, I got three, I got four. Sorry, three only. Sorry, three is my last one. I got one spare one, ah, doesn't, doesn't matter. Eh. Just keep it there. So you want to examine your this thing, you just uh Make sure just to check to make sure that you got the pictures correctly. Uh, so if you click, if you 
click at the center of the picture, right, you will see the four frames all appearing. Something like this. Okay. Actually, uh, this type of thing is quite fun. Uh. You can make uh, some funny images uh, like a running dog and stuff like that, which I got example, uh, but I don't have time to show you now. Uh. You can make into some funny uh, animation. Uh. Okay. Animation basically is uh, different images put together and they stack, stack them up and then you run. Run over it. Using a for loop or something, you can run, create a running image of a running dog or something or anything, uh, anything image. Uh. Okay, so you got this four. Okay, after you've done that, I hope uh, everybody follow already. Now what you can do is that you can then make this thing into an indicator, change to indicator. Okay, change this fella now into an indicator. Okay, which I did. Okay, this is the indicator already. Okay, so let's try and see uh, now. I imagine if the user is going to control, you're going to change this thing. Eh. Now, what you're going to do, you, you, we can do a test first. Uh. Why don't we do a little test first? Okay, what you do is, uh, can you help me to, okay, let's see whether we do this. Uh. Okay, you right click on your left view. Uh. Okay, uh, I want a numeric control, let's say for now. Okay, I'm going to select a numeric control and drop it here first. This thing must be integer, okay, because the big ring has been defined already. So what you need to do after you tell me change the name, you drop the numeric control, right? Drop a numeric control on your left view front panel first. Change the name, maybe call it integer. This is for testing only, just to test. Okay, now what you do is that you right click, you change the representation. Okay, change it to an integer. I, not a DBL. DBL is float. I don't want, I want an integer. So I change the representation, change it to an I8. Okay, so you turn blue color. You see, uh, I8, integer 8. So what I do is I wire this thing to here. Okay, so let's, uh, okay, let's try and run this. Uh. Okay, if I run this, okay, if, you, if your program should be able to run it. So what I do is I select this one. You see, uh, I select one, select two, Oh, it doesn't show up uh, okay, uh, because it's the uh, wait, wait, sorry. Okay, sorry. Correction, uh, correction. This one is a wrong type. It should be uh, U. Okay, try to change to U sixteen, not U eight. Eh. Okay, you see here. Uh, okay, what I do? Is, sorry, I repeat again. Uh, your this indicator here, integer. I right click, go to representation, change to use uh unsigned sixteen. Uh, change to U sixteen. This one. Unsigned 16 bit. Okay, just try this on us. Uh, see if it works. Okay, change after you change to U16. Okay, you run it again, you see if it works. If it's one, two, or oh, it doesn't. Uh, three. Okay, it doesn't. Okay, small error. You okay, you your what you did was your duplicated this thing, right? Okay, I know. Some of you, but it will show you the okay. This is okay, maybe you're right. Uh, Okay, sorry, eh. this part. Okay, what you did, you right click create a controller. I just want to test the. Oh, sorry. Click, uh, create a constant. Create a control, right? Ring tree. But your ring tree will be. It's actually not. Uh, I was hoping to use a decimal. Okay, this one I delete. Uh, sorry, eh. this one a bit of the confusion. Yeah, delete this one. But you are using ring tree to control the other image, lah. But doesn't uh, if I run it right, and my ring tree is here. Eh? So if you are just controlling, but your oh sorry, you know why not? Okay, I think I my ring two is missing. Ah. sorry, sorry, some confusion for you here. Sorry about that. My ring two is this picture. Sorry, I got one picture overlaying the other one. Ah. sorry, ah. This one hide it. Uh. Okay, to avoid the confusion, this was what I was trying to come at. I got created an uh, indicator just to test out this thing. Uh. What I, my intention was to test out this thing to make sure, yeah. So one is a control, one is an indicator uh, just to for testing purpose. Eh. 
you see what I mean? I was just trying to that just now I created this because I want to keep as a reserve eh? just in case somebody still asks me question on the ring, I can still have it there. This one is just my backup one. Ah. Okay, I just leave it there. Okay, so something like that. So I got one uh control one indicator. Okay, so when I run, I, I just try to test and show you like this is how it works. Eh? If you select the index, uh, it will show you the, the picture correctly eh, to indicate. Okay, can you all up to here? I hope, sorry for the confusion for the earlier part. Uh. So far, so good. This one for testing only, this part. Eh. This part is the testing part. Any question so far? I hope it's not too confusing. Eh. Because what I want to show you, it was the, just now this, uh, this our my fellow lecturer who did this ah. yeah she used this to actually i don't know if i use my integer one is also can work ah, to be honest this one right if i change this one instead of using a what i can change to a constant ah. let's see if i change to a constant ah. let's say ah. i change to a constant now ah. okay a constant tree will display this index ah. you see what i mean so if i Right click if I did make this one. Ah, there you see it. Okay, this one I was intentionally trying to explain to you. Eh. Instead of using the another picture to show another picture doesn't make sense. But ah, this is what actually I was in my in my main intention was to use this. Eh. Okay, just now my hiccup was because I overlay onto a ring two. Eh. And it doesn't seem to because the ring to overlay the original ring. Eh. So when I was changing, I don't see anything. Eh. You understand what I mean? So I, I purposely put here as a this ring to as a backup in case some of you got some problem. Eh. Just now it was a control, I changed to indicator. Ma. Oh. So this okay, this is the final one. Final final. Okay, so when you run, if I change the index for my control here, the picture can be flagged out based on the index. Eh. See what I do here. So I use zero for off. Okay, I use one for dim. I use position two to make it slightly brighter, and then I make position three the brightest. Do you understand what I'm saying? Huh? Okay, I got four, right? You were saying because I got one spare one. I just ignore it, I don't use. I know I got one four. You got four, right? Then you four lay. Somebody was saying. Then five. Okay, ignore that one. If you got extra, right, you can ignore it or you can delete. Uh. Okay, if you want, you can stop the program. Uh, if you want, I know you all got spare. Some of you got spare like me, right? I got one spare. You can try to delete the access frame. Eh. Uh, okay, you got spare, it's okay. As long as you got the four image frame inside the picture ring. Okay, I think it's fine. Okay, is it okay so far? Now, okay, so the, the next tricky part uh, after you've done this, okay, this my picture ring is okay. Question, uh, uh, Justin or Benedict, you want to ask something? How to make the pick ring tree? Okay, what I did, right? Actually, it's just, uh, okay, I redo this part. Uh, I redo this part. Eh. I delete this part again. It's actually an uh, unsigned 16. You must follow the data type. Eh. He say U16, uh, you must make sure yours is a U16. So I delete this one, I show you one more time. Uh. Let's start from here for everybody. Uh. So what you do is that you right click, you go to numeric. Okay, you can do it this way also. Go to numeric control. Okay, go to numeric control first. No, okay, numeric control. But this is a different data type. You see what I mean? You, if, you, if you match this, you cannot wire direct. Uh. If you do this, you will get a, you will get a red color dot. Eh. Okay, if you connect like that, right, you will write, you will get actually it might work, but it's not very good. There's a red dot here. Red dot means it's a mismatch of data type. So if you if you run this, okay, if I run like that, okay, then if I type in one, enter, you must enter, ah, you will still change. And if you type in two, okay, you will still change. If you type in three, right, you must manually type, ah. But this is not a good way, lah. Okay, the okay, you, you must understand it. Eh. If I do it this way, it still works, eh. But the point is that this fella here is a is a decimal floating number, eh. Okay. You, you understand what I mean? You can do it this way, but what happens if you because this is a decimal number, right? 
If I put 3.5, uh, you might run into a problem. Eh? When I run, uh, you will go into the next frame. Eh? You understand what I'm saying? Uh, so you, 0 0.5 uh, is not an exact number. Uh. You will you probably round up uh, or round down. Okay, you, you see my point? So it's best to make sure that the data type is exactly the same type. Eh? Okay, so maybe uh, this this may not be a good. But anyway, this is just for testing. Uh, you don't need this one, uh, to be honest. What you need, okay, I'm going to right click. Uh, okay, this part. Okay, I delete this one. I don't need this. Eh? What you need to do is just right click here, create a constant. Go to create constant. Uh, okay, what I want is this one. What I need to know is that the position eh? zero means off, right? Uh, one means dim, two means bright, and then number uh, uh, the other number, right? Zero, I have zero, one, two, and three. Man. Right? Three means the brightest. Okay, I think we cannot spend too much time on this one. Uh. This, one this picture ring take too long. Eh. Okay, I need to just tell you, okay, what you need to do is that you have to use a selector to select the range. Eh. Okay, you can uh, check it out. Uh. I mean, of course, you can. there are different things you can do. Eh. This one, you can do this thing called uh, in range or not. Eh. Uh, okay, so you check. Because there are a few uh, range, right? You can use one of these uh, in range and and hooks. Uh. This one, you can use this function like what the lecturer did. Okay, if you recall what is this function. Okay, I might not have time to do everything. Eh. So you, you all might need to spend a bit of your own time. To figure out this thing, eh? okay. So something like that. So in range, right? In range and coax, it means that determine whether it's within the range. If it's in the range, then how? Ah, this one. The function. Okay, different ways to do it. Ah, you can use this method. Eh? Okay, if your upper limit, lower limit. Remember last week we used this function, right, for the temperature simulator, that one. Eh? Okay, if it's in range, then you will show you. Uh, the true or false eh? okay but the, this thing you got four ranges ah. okay maybe what y'all can do ah. okay what y'all can do y'all can take a picture of this thing eh? this one y'all got this program right I mean you, you, do, you don't have this program sorry uh, y'all can take a picture of this one eh? okay to follow your exercise ah. the other rest are easier eh? this one is probably a bit harder eh? Okay, because what she did was she set the range between zero to two. Uh, she put a frame. Eh. It's, um, it's a case in case. Uh. Okay, maybe y'all can take a look. Eh. She got the, she a bit nested. Lah. She got three cases. Eh. Case, case structure. K structure and K structure not so uh, good la, in a sense. So when it's between zero to two volt, la, okay. Imagine uh, if the output control is zero to two volt, it will it will output a true right. So you will switch off this lamp brightness. This lamp brightness is actually just now the picture ring, eh, the same one, eh, the picture ring. Maybe y'all can take a picture eh, uh, using your phone or whatever. Eh. Y'all take a picture of it. So this is the first frame. Okay, if it's true, that means it's, if it's between zero volt and two volt, the output is true, right? The, from this function here, the it will switch, it will display the first picture, which is the to turn off the lamp. Remember, index zero is the turn off the lamp. Okay, but if it's false, then how? If it's false, okay, y'all take ready, take picture ready. Take a picture. Take a picture of this. Uh, I might be running out of time soon. Eh. Take a picture of this one. Okay, can I uh, take a picture already? Everyone? I'm going to show you the next frame. If you have done so. Okay, now what happened if it's the false case? Uh, okay, so she, she did was the voltage come out, right? If it's, let's say you operate between uh, Two to three volt. Eh? You understand? The first one was between zero to two. Then the when is so you if it's not the case, right? Then you have the consider the case when the range is between two to three. If it's two to three, then what do you do? 
if it's between two to three, then you display the first image. Eh? The first image for the picture ring, which is uh, the dim, right? The dim image. Okay, when it's between two to three, please take picture. Uh, take picture of this one. Okay, take ready. Okay, this is a uh, false case and true case. Uh, okay, so it's between two to three. All right. Now, if it's not between two to three, then it's the next case ready, right? That means if it's not between two to three, that means you this the, in, the inner case structure here will be false, ma. So let's take a look at the false case. Ah, uh, then he she check again. The value is it between three volt to four volt? So she check if it's yes, right? Then she output the value two. The index two, which is for the brightness, slightly bright two, right? So she pass it out to the picture ring. I'll take a picture. Uh, take a picture of this one. Okay, take a picture. Then finally, finally, if if it's not between three volt to four volt, then it must be this one must be false one. Right? It should be definitely between 4 volt to 5 volt already. So then he go to the third level, which is the when the, the picture is at the brightest, eh, which is frame number 3. Take picture, uh, take picture. Well, quite difficult to uh, so-called explain uh, this one. It takes a bit of time. Eh. There might be a better way to do this. Uh. If anybody can do a better way than this, uh, I, will, I would like to see. Uh, and I will give you better mark. Uh, if you can do another way. Of course, I got. I, I would know how to do it, lah. But ah, uh, okay. You do another way, uh, Okay, good. Ah, uh, I don't like actually. To be honest, uh, not to say anything, but I don't really like uh, programming that is nested case. Uh, this is called. Uh, if you want me to type down, type down. But it's called nested. Uh, nested case structure. Not very good, eh? This method, nested case structure, is very difficult to 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 program and understand it. You you see what I mean? Ah, uh, okay. You're going to try another way, ah. Uh. Okay, I'll give you a hint. Uh, if you want to do another way, right, you might want to consider using the select function. Okay, I'll give you a hint. Eh? This one. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll try and do another way after dinner, after my dinner time uh, later. I'll try and do another one. But I, I suggest you use this select function. Okay, this is another way. There are a couple of techniques uh, you can do. Uh. You can do the min max, so you can do the select function. I'll let you all go and explore. Uh. This one, if you got time, eh? Okay, try and do it. But if you want, you can follow this way of doing uh, uh, In case, in case, yeah, correct. Nested case, Justin is right. Uh. Nested case means the case are inside another case. Eh. So in this case, it's case in case in case. You're right, three times. Which is very difficult to make your programming very difficult to see. Eh. Uh, but it works. Uh. This program, you see what I mean? If you see the demo, right, this thing, it works. Uh, right? If, you, if I run this thing again to demo. Uh, okay, so basically, he actually show you, okay, zero to one, Nothing right is off right now. One, well, actually, zero to two volt is off eh, all the way right off. Uh. Okay, now then you see uh, between two volt to three volt. Uh. Uh, okay, slightly uh, dim. Uh. This is slightly dim. Two to three. Okay, which picture frame is it? Uh, if I may ask you, do you remember uh, between two volt to three? What is the picture frame? What should it be? Any guess? What is the picture? There are only four frames, all right? Zero frame. Uh, zero frame, frame frame one, frame two, frame three, right? So this one between two to three volt, what is the picture frame? Did anybody say? Tell me. Anyone knows? Frame one, yes, correct. Huh? Justin, you are following lesson. Okay, very good. Eh? The rest I don't know. Huh? But Justin is right. It's frame one. Right, zero then one, right? Yeah, then between uh, three volt to four volt huh, is the frame two. Okay, I'll show you. Huh? If the picture will change. Eh? Uh, then you see three to four, yes, you will see slightly brighter, brighter, sorry. Okay, between three volt to four volt is frame two, correct? And then of course, from frame, uh, from between voltage four to five volt, right, is the last frame. Okay, so uh, Justin is right, huh? you get it right, correct. So these are the things to, to take note. Okay, Ken? Uh, I like your try first. Uh. If you need to submit uh, this one, you all go and try uh, this exercise. Okay, I want to quickly move on to the next one if you allow me. Eh, this one. Uh, if you all cannot, then you don't try not to give up. Uh, try not to give up. Eh. Try to do. Okay, I hope it's, you learn something. Uh. Today, I think you all learn something on the picture. At least you know what's a picture ring. Uh, I hope. And then uh, this 
case structure and then this is the test and this advantage are uh, using case in case and eh, so-called nested cases uh. okay okay now i think okay maybe in the interest of time uh, okay i want to show you what you have, what i have downloaded for, what you have downloaded okay now what i have also provided you is another one i want to show you first uh. okay i'm going to move on uh. this one any question uh, or this lamb brightness one i think we okay uh, a lot we spend a lot of time already eh. yes justin you're right between zero to two volt uh, is uh, frame uh, the first frame which is no light yes correct this is actually the real behavior of the light bulb eh, when you are back in the lab you see the thing eh. so you control the, yeah you're right so okay uh, can i move on uh, guys ladies can i okay thanks uh okay now y'all can re-catch re the video uh, this recording eh. Okay, now I want to show you the next thing in the, because in, in the interest of time. Uh, interest of time. Uh, okay, the other one is the if you follow along your lab, uh, there's one they ask you to do the temperature, like this is the LM335. Now, this thing I already done for you already. Okay, this one. So I'm going to open up this uh, uh, simulate, simulated temperature analog input AI channel zero. This one. Can you open up this program? Eh? Okay, so what it does, right, uh, is this little program here. Now, this is basically uh, showing you a thermometer. There's a temperature chart. Okay, what it does, right, if you run this program, can you try that? Uh, you run, you will see that the, it's a simulator, uh, this one. They will simulate the display of the temperature. Okay, randomly fluctuating between, I don't know, 20 something to 30 something temperature degree. Uh. Okay, now this is actually the real thing that you will see in the lab. Man. When you go back to the lab, you will see this thing. But actually, okay, what, what we did was the code. Uh, okay, if you, if you see the code which I copied for you. Okay, now we are using the temperature sensor. Eh, okay, and it should be AI channel zero. Okay temperature sensor okay so what we do was okay this program here right okay this part is the simulator eh? this part here okay what it does is that if you want to pay attention is to pay attention at the node here la. all the little nodes here are important now this sensor is called the lm335 temperature sensor eh? lm335 what it does is it has a characteristics that it outputs 10 millivolt per degree kelvin eh? Okay, 10 millivolt per degree Kelvin. Okay, this, this little note here is important. Uh, just to for your info. Uh, this I, I make it larger for you. 10 millivolt per degree Kelvin. So basically it outputs a voltage. Eh. This sensor outputs a voltage. Okay, and then you need to convert that degree Kelvin into degree Celsius eh, from voltage. Eh. So there's a little bit of a conversion here. Okay. Now, in fact, there is a formula which uh, I don't have it here. Okay, I think you can figure out. Which maybe I can put it here. Uh, there is a formula conversion uh, from degree uh, Kelvin to degree uh, Celsius. Okay, there is a formula. So, what you need to do is that uh, you need to minus uh, 273.15. Okay, this, this part here, uh, that this is to convert, uh, that this part, the documentation is this part here, to convert the degree Kelvin to degree Celsius. Okay, so what she did, this part here is just to simulate the output voltage of the sensor. Okay, maybe I'll do this part for you, uh, to help, help you. Eh. Okay, so what I want is temperature sensor, right? So I know temperature sensor is AI channel zero. Okay, so let, let me do that and show you. Uh. Okay, what I do is that uh, I right click, okay, I go to measurement IO, so I'm going to do the NI MX, select the DAQ assistant, same thing. So actually, this exercise, you just need to create one DAQ assistant, that's all. Eh. Okay, which, which I'm showing you now, uh, so you, you save you uh, a lot of time. Eh. So you select this DAQ assistant, drop it here. Okay, that's your job. Eh. You just need to create this one for this exercise. Eh. The rest you don't touch eh, for you to go and understand. Ah. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to acquire signal, right? Now this time round, I want to acquire analog input. Right, because I want temperature sensor. So I select this. Uh, okay, I'm going to choose voltage. Ah. Be careful. Ah. Okay, we have one step back. 
Okay, voltage are not temperature because this sensor, the connect connection to this uh, hardware is output the voltage. Eh? The LM three three five temperature sensor is a it's a sensor it's a model of a sensor uh, LM three three five. You can just Google it. Eh? Okay, LM three three five. Eh? It's the sensor that we are using in the for the lab. So you choose voltage. Okay, so we choose this AI channel zero. Okay, then you click finish. Okay, now over here, uh, this part here a bit tricky. You need to do the setting. Uh. So the minimum you choose uh, zero. Uh. Okay, the maximum is five volts. Okay, and then this one is the okay RSE. Uh. Choose this one, preference single ended. Choose this one. Here, RSE now sample wise choose one sample on demand. Uh, this is the setting that you need to set. Okay, so it means that you're going to measure input zero between zero to five volts. Okay, uh, the terminal is a is a grounded signal, so you use RSE reference single single ended. Choose one sample on demand. Then after you're done, react. Okay, what you do is that you click okay. Okay, click okay. Right, and okay, this thing will com communicate with this DAQ assistant. It's a simulator one. Uh, this is a simulator deck. Eh? I don't have the actual hardware with me. Okay, so what I do is this is the so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the text two A two and change this thing. Eh? Change the name. Uh. Okay, all this uh temperature. Okay, maybe you can do that. Uh. You can do by yourself. Eh. Then you are, this part is considered done. Eh. Okay, now I am okay, I am 35. Right. Okay, then you what you do is that the output of this signal, right, is connected to the this terminal here. Okay, then done. Okay, so basically, if you actually have the physical hardware in the lab. Uh, in the lab with this hardware, when you output this voltage, right, it will go through this this path here, this conversion part here. Eh. Okay, it will convert and then it will show you the actual temperature of the, the room, let's say you are measuring, and then it output to the thermometer also. Right? So this one, ah. so you will output to the thermometer, okay, you will also display on the chart. There's something like this, eh. okay, something like this. Okay, because this part is the voltage. Eh. Then you convert it into degrees Celsius. So this is the, the actual like sort of a, but this is a simulation obviously. So what we did was we we simulated the whole experience. So what we do is that the the actual because the output of this thing is dummy now. The output of this DAQ assistant is dummy because there's no connection to hardware, remember? So what we did was we used the subtract function here. Okay, when we subtract, you cancel away the signal. Uh, the okay, you notice that I, the two terminal I wired, I short them together, short circuit so called. Uh. So the data goes in here, comes out here, output here will be zero. Eh. If you don't believe, right, I can run the light bulb, turn on the light bulb, and you run, you see uh, the output of this subtract function here will be zero. Eh. That's the deliberately done it. You do it on purpose. Okay, you see, uh, the output here is two point something, yeah. So output here is zero, is it? Yeah, the idea is to cancel away this guy. You, you all see, uh, I hope you all see it. The idea is to cancel away the sorry, yes, okay. cancel away the signal output so that it takes the data from the simulation part. The simulation part is this part here. Okay, the simulation. You take the data output from here, then you go add into here, then you uh, convert uh, temperature, okay, uh, millivolt. Then you minus two seven. This part is just to do a conversion degree Kelvin to degree Celsius. Okay. So in case you're asking me, hey, so how you all simulate this part? Uh, quite interesting. Okay. So what you did was we just created a simple array. We just typically just output some random voltage, eh? voltage value that we think for the the, the voltage sensor LM three three five. They output something like this. Eh? So we created an empty array. Then we just put some random. Uh, Voltage value pretty close to the actual sensor output voltage. Okay, then we use this index array to 
randomly, uh, this is an index array. Okay, so this index array, then we use a random number generator to randomly pull out this value from here. So to make the thing like very real like that, you see what I mean? When you run this graph, don't you think it looks like a bit like real there? The voltage is quite randomly generated. So uh, to give you a feel uh, that they, this one looks like real, uh, this temperature like fluctuating a bit. Because if we, in a real scenario, uh, the sensor will not be constant one. It has to fluctuate up and down because of noise and all those things. So this part is just the simulation. Eh? Okay, I think you all probably drown already. Eh? I think eh? this part eh? up to here. Okay, not to worry. Just for you to go. It's good that you, you can understand what I'm doing here. It's good. Eh? Okay, and then this is the temperature simulator one. Eh? Okay, now the other one. Oh, sorry. Okay, this part. This part I hope. You all can figure out and think about it first. Let me close this one first. Okay, so this is the temperature one. Okay, which is in your lab four, uh, by the way. Your lab four. This part, this part, I don't know how to explain already. I close this. We spend quite a lot of time on the picture ring, uh, that's why. Okay, and then uh, this part I close, I don't say really. Uh, Okay, then there's one called the digital input. Uh, this one is easy. Simulate the digital input, which is inside your lab 4. Eh. The switch one. The push button. Eh. Okay, so I, then I open up and show you. You have this program also. So it looks like that. So one button, one control. So basically, when you run this, you click the switch, right? It turns on the status. Eh. Okay, to off it. Okay, so it's pretty much like this uh. Uh, okay so if you want to take a look uh, okay this part here okay so what i did was now basically again the daq is simulated simulation uh, this one is to simulate the red switch eh. okay to simulate that i'm reading from the red switch eh. okay you understand what i mean uh? So the red switch, if you look at the label here, the is digital input. Uh, imagine uh, so imagine if you can you are in the lab, you got this box. If you run this program, if you press your finger onto the red button, uh, the push button, the lab view will be able to acknowledge and read that digital input and then display here. Okay, so think about it, right? So basically this guy will be a digital input. Right, this uh, thing that we are trying to simulate is a red switch. Uh. So I'm trying to read the red switch. Now, I've already done this for you already. I think you already have this, but I, I hope you can go and read and understand what we are doing here. Okay, so this is the switch control, as you can see. So when I run this, when I flick the switch, it's as though I'm simulating, I'm pressing on the red color button. Eh. Right, so the thing, all right, you see, I click on this. Uh, okay, you try yourself. Eh. So what we did was, uh, rather than taking it from the hardware, this part is like the hardware part, which we don't have the hardware, but I simulate. This is the simulation part. Uh. This part, okay, if you see my highlight here, this part is the simulation part, as though I'm pressing the red button, physically onto the switch. Okay, so I use an all function here to all the two. That means I all the simulation part, this is the simulation part which will not output anything for us, definitely, because it's a dummy, right? And this is the simulation part. This is the simulator hardware part, uh, which we don't have at the moment. Uh. But I tell you, trust assured, rest assured that when we go back to the lab, uh, all these things, you, you hook it up, uh, you will run it. You understand? This is the simulation of the hardware. This is just a simulation on the software. And it, yeah, and I use the all function. Uh. As you know, all function, right? You can all two things. Eh? Okay, yeah, so you can see if I run, I click the all and this thing will click up and down. Okay, so this is for the digital switch, uh, the input part for your lab 4. Okay, and then finally, there's one on the simulated, the light intensity one, this one. I also created for you already. Okay, which is this one here. So I'll show you this one. This is my last uh, last thing to explain okay yeah this one which i also took the effort and trouble to go and 
paste this sticker, this label here for you to see. Yeah. Okay, I think it's all done for you, uh, basically, at this part. So basically, this one is the simulator deck for the light sensor. So how to, let's take a look and see how it works. Uh. So if I run this thing, uh, okay, uh, it is, that means there's a sensor, it's an LDR uh, light sensor. If you cover it, there's no voltage. Eh. So you can see that it simulates that there's, there's very little voltage, eh, 0 0.5 volts. But, but if I uncover, imagine, uh, in the lab, uh, if I uncover it, it will reveal the, the ambient light, right? the light shine on it. Uh. The voltage will shoot up to say about 4.5 volts. Eh. See what I mean? This is the, this is the best we could do like, at the, for simulation eh. at the moment. We don't have the hardware to, to show you. Uh, okay, so basically you got three stages. Uh. So you got ambient light means exposed fully to the atmosphere. The light, uh, you will get the highest voltage. Eh. And cover it, cover it means you use the hand to cover the sensor. So when you cover the sensor, the voltage drop, drop to almost zero. Then you've got the middle part, dim. Uh, maybe right in the middle. Okay. So you get about 2.5. So there are three steps uh, if you ask me. Eh. So okay. So there are three stages uh, for this thing. So you, yeah. Okay, so this one got three parts. Uh. Cover, dim, and ambient light. Okay, so this part also done for you already. So they uses this thing called the enum. Okay, so this enum just to share. Okay, is from here. So e, sorry, enum control. Okay, I'm going to end the class soon. Uh. I know you're all tired already. This enum. I also uh, run out of voice already. This is called the enum. Okay, to create this thing. Okay, so far. So maybe the task for you all really is to at least go through this thing, go and understand, and then try to figure out for me the just now the one, the lamp control that one. Uh. So I leave that one as a little ex exercise for you to do it. Okay, because most of the thing all done already. But I want you all to really go and understand, uh, to be honest. I can give you all the code, but no use uh, if you don't understand what's going on, uh, what's the point. Okay, so I hope, okay, my hope is that you can go and help me do the lamp one. Okay, the lamp brightness control. Okay, so that you can at least show me, or you know, in your demo, uh, you can at least understand and be able to show the, the lamp brightness control thing. Eh. Okay, can? Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, I'm going to up upload it so you all can uh, look at it. Yes, but the, the thing is that the, the zoom, uh, the conversion will take about a few minutes, uh, maybe about 20 minutes. Eh. So give me some time. Uh. Okay, uh, I'll make sure it's up by tonight. Uh, before, uh, after my dinner time, maybe it will be up ready. Eh? Okay, can you do? We'll upload. Uh, Kivana, thanks. Yeah, we'll update the video, uh, the, the recording for today to the, uh, the YouTube. Uh, the YouTube link. Now, I will let you all know. Uh. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody. Rest well, too. Thank you, uh, Herman. Yeah, so uh, Selamat Hari Raya Adi Fitri uh, for all our Muslim friends. So, so rest, uh, y'all. Uh, uh, when is it due? How about, uh, okay, good good question. Maybe if y'all about more time, uh, y'all give y'all more time. Eh? But y'all try to do, let's uh, say more time. More time doesn't, time, it doesn't help also, right? It's not y'all try to do. Maybe how about 1st of May? Okay, in uh, Monday's time, uh, that means you got more than one week to do. 1st uh, of May. Oh, can, uh, I know y'all swam with many things. Uh. Hey, sorry, sorry, first of June, thank you. Eh. First June, sorry, sorry. First June, still leaving behind. Eh. Sorry, <laughs> first June, yes. Okay, can try to do submit where same. Eh. I will create the assignment, the lab four that you all submit inside there. Can I try to clear eh, if you can? Eh. If like this weekend, you all got time, I'll try to clear for if I were you. Eh. I, I, will, I will upload. Eh. Yeah, the lab sheet along with the exercises can. The lamp brightness one, you all do lah. The one, uh, because I've given you all the rest already, so you all need to do just help me do one. But I would like to see one thing lah. If you all can uh, don't do the nested cases the example. That's why I told you don't do that method. Eh. So you all understand what we want uh. So between zero volt, let me iterate uh, Reiterate zero to two volt uh, The lamp is switch off uh, No, no brightness. Z between okay, take note uh, Zero to two. Maybe I type it out to be very clear. Zero to uh. Two votes, right? Okay, uh, that means you use image uh, one, uh, which is the lamp of it. 
Okay, uh, let me just type this thing then I'm let you all off it. Eh. You all can take note. Eh. Okay, let me off, but remember eh, the first image, right? Zero to two. So, but it's between uh, two to three, right? What did we say eh, just now? Two to three volt. What happened? You use the, uh, what, what did we do? Image, we use the lamp dim, right? Eh? Image two. Okay, lamp dim. You all want to copy down, uh, copy down. Lamp uh, dim. Then between uh, 3 to 4 volts, uh, okay, we will use the third image, image number 3, right? Which is called uh, Lamb Bright. Uh. If I'm trying to follow exactly the same name convention as the image file that I give you on. Okay, and then of course, uh, 4 to 5 volts. Uh, okay, uh, you use the image uh, 4. Okay. Well, my, I also run out of voice already. Yeah, lamp brightness. Ah. Oh, can ah, y'all can take a picture ah, of this comment here. Yeah, throw, I'll put inside the WhatsApp. Ah. Okay, well, I try my best already today. I, I need water already. I need to run off to get water. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's all I have. Can you all take picture or copy down somewhere? Uh? Quite easy, uh? just a few things here. Uh. Okay, can you all do that? This one. Okay, okay. Yeah, we overrun already, 10 minutes. Okay, come, let's, uh, that's all I have for you. I will create the assignment, then you all will let, uh, let fall, uh, and you all can submit that. Okay, and if not, no question, I think we will yeah, call off uh, the session. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's all I have. You are allowed to dismiss. We will let you all go. Bye. Okay, have a good holiday. Have some rest also. Uh. Have some rest. Work and then also have some rest. Uh. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye, thanks. Thank you. Bye bye.